Hi, my name is Andrei, and today we are in the heart of Kiev, almost 100 meters away from Euromaidan. I would like to record this video for everyone who speaks English, and today we'll talk about Revolution 2014 that happened in Ukraine and about things that should go viral. The story I've heard from one of the participants of Euromaidan last week really impressed me. And today I would like everyone to get to know what really happened here during this time. Hi everyone, my name is Igor. Uh, we met with my friend Andrew today to make this video for you. Uh, this video is going to be about uh, uh, Euromaidan, uh, we're in Kyiv, sorry, in uh, Ukraine, uh, Kyiv, Ukraine's capital, and uh, we want to make this video about Ukrainian revolution and uh, Maidan for uh, our English-speaking friends and generally the uh, English-speaking uh, public for them to get known but more about uh, Ukrainian revolution, what was things were about, what was going on, and I'm going to tell this story from the perspective of the person who was uh, participating in Maidan. Uh, on the daily basis and uh, just try to describe how, how things were going on and uh, I am uh, not going to mention some of the political aspects uh, because uh, well, basically people are not uh, aware of them uh, like me myself also and uh, most of those are couloir things so we're not going to discuss those but um, let's start and I'll tell you how, it's, how it all started, uh, why Euromaidan appeared. Uh, so basically everything started uh, exactly five months ago in uh, November 2013, uh, 20th of November 24th, 23rd, um, because our government were about to sign the association agreement with the EU and um, people, uh, government were preparing for this uh, for a few years uh, and uh, uh, many people were very eager to sign this association as it would uh, bring uh, closer ties between Ukraine and the uh, EU. Um, people who... The younger generation were traveling a lot uh, to the West. People know that the conditions are life are higher. Well, many people were very willing to sign this association agreement and uh, uh, on the 20th uh, of November, our government simply cancelled uh, the uh, signing the association. So our president, ex-president, uh, on that uh, now ex-president on that time, he was a president. Yanukovych said that uh, we're uh, uh, not going to sign the association. So it was the decision of one person. One person, per, per, like basically, uh, overstepped everything. Said we're not doing this and. Uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, people were really uh, shocked. They uh, didn't know what to do because uh, for uh, many of uh, them, for many people who were willing to sign this association, EU meant uh, better conditions of life, uh, respect for human rights, like those kind of things, like simple, simple things. Some may, uh, may say they're abstract, but uh, it, was, it, would also, it would also open uh, the uh, market uh, for Ukraine, European market and uh, modernize the economy, those kind of things, you know. And uh, on the 20th of November, uh, first people who were students and uh, mostly youth people my age, like 20, 25 years, they would come up here to Maidan and gather uh, just uh, under this monument, Monument of Independence. Uh, by the way, this is, uh, Maidan means uh, square. So this is the Independence uh, Square, uh, just in the center of Kyiv. That's where the revolution uh, pretty much took place. And. Uh, uh, firstly, it was students, and uh, what happened is uh, one week after uh, people were gathering on this square, a special unit of the security service uh, ministry, um, a special unit of the uh, police, they uh, beat up those uh, students. Uh, it was very brutal uh, thing. Uh, no one would expect those kind of things happened. Uh, many people were shocked, and uh, no one would expect those kind of cruelty from the government and many people would go out at Maidan like one week later at the beginning of December like maybe one million people like went out at Maidan uh, just to protest against uh, those kind of actions you know uh, people don't want to live under the dictatorship in the totalitarian state uh, don't want to live in the police state so they come out and uh, uh, yeah basically protesting not uh, anymore signing the association with the EU, 
but uh, for resignation of president, resignation of government, uh, those were the main conditions. And uh, Euromaidan was very peaceful. It was going on like that for uh, two months, uh, from the middle uh, end of November till the end of January. Uh, for two months, it, it's been a peaceful action, peaceful protest. Uh, many people would gather here, come, we would uh, bring uh, food, we would bring medicine, uh, build barricades, uh, stay overnight. It's been like a huge amount of people here. But uh, everything changed in January uh, because of the set of laws that were passed in our government. It was on the 16th of January. It was a copy of the Russian laws that would uh, basically put down all the basic rights of the uh, citizens. Uh, so you couldn't wear, like, let's say, a mask on public, you couldn't wear a helmet, you couldn't uh, ride five cars in a row. So uh, it, were, it were really shocking laws and uh, people could not accept it anymore. So the clashes with the police occurred at the Groshevskoho street, which is uh, farther there, this way. And the uh, yeah, mostly the Yost people, they start uh, taking those uh, paving stones. Uh, just uh, Andrew <laughs> showed the paving stones. Uh, so those are like uh, bricks. Uh, people would uh, break them into the pieces and uh, throw into the police. Uh, they're actually pretty heavy, maybe four or five kilograms each. So it's kind of hard also to break it up. So it's kind of a solid piece of rock. So uh, yeah, uh, people would uh, construct Molotov cocktails and uh, throw at the police. Uh, all, I mean, it's very important to understand that the people didn't want to do it the violent way. No one wanted to have any victims. But uh, after this set of laws, you know, you couldn't do anything anymore. People were protesting peacefully for uh, two months, but nothing could have been done. Nothing changed, you know. Government refused to listen to people. President refused to listen to people. And uh, that's why the clashes appeared. So uh, then in January 1st, people died, they were shot, you know, you wake up in the morning, you read the news uh, and uh, the first thing you, you read in the morning is the news and you uh, find out that the, like, for, there are first victims who were killed by the police. That's uh, horrible and uh, you, you understand that the line was uh, overstepped. So uh, uh, what was uh, going to support the uh, Euromaidan all this time and what kind of what kind of class of people this revolution was? Yeah, very good question. Uh, yeah, I've uh, well, me and my friends, like uh, probably 95% of people who's been at Maidan, been uh, 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 who I know has been at Maidan and supporting the revolution. Uh, also, it's pretty much we can say it's pretty much the revolution of the middle class, uh, middle and uh, well, the, the, the poor class and the middle class because uh, those are the uh, people who wanted to pretty much change the system, you know, to fight against the corruption. Because the main goal was not to change the uh, the head, the president, not the person who rules everything, but to change the uh, government, change the uh, corrupted uh, judges, judges, change the corrupted. Uh, police officers, uh, people uh, who basically constitute this corrupted system. Unfortunately, uh, Ukraine is very famous for its uh, high uh, corruption and that's people wanted to reboot the system. And uh, so the middle class are the young people who uh, have troubles basically living in those kind of conditions because you have to bribe everyone everywhere and uh, the people wanted to change that. So. Uh, yeah, to change the rules of the games, you know. Uh, so mostly young people starting from like 16, 17, 18 years and uh, up till 45, 50 were supporting. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been really nice. Again, you can see there are many flags, uh, many nationalities has been uh, around. People from many countries would write to us. Uh, it's been very nice, uh, like a huge solidarity. We're, we're very glad. And. Uh, but uh, later on, the biggest escalation uh, happened in uh, February. So the, the one month of the active protests were going on. What is very uh, horrible is that people were disappearing. People were kidnapped, tortured, and then found dead somewhere in the forest. It was uh, conducted by the uh, government, by the special forces of police. And uh, many people were still not found, around 200, 300, 400 people maybe. They're still not found and people don't know where they are. Uh, in February of the 18th and 20s, around 100 of people were shot by the sniper. It was all straight shots at the head, uh, neck or heart. So like around 100 
people died just that day. It's uh, mostly been there on the Institutska Street, uh, which means the streets of in the institutions that's where uh, up there is the, where our government is. And uh, yeah, many people were killed on that street. Uh, this uh, street probably going to be renamed uh, for the people who died on this street. It will be called the uh, street of the heroes of the uh, uh, Kai hundreds because it's been a like hundred people who died uh, on that on that clash. So it's been the highest uh, peak on the 18th and 20th of February, and on the 23rd of February, Yanukovych, our ex-president, he fled to Russia, and uh, now he's hiding there with our ex-minister uh, of uh, uh, security service and uh, uh, minister of tax. Uh, all those people who were pretty much uh, well, uh, stealing and corrupting our country, uh, according to. Uh, sources to media, they money laundered uh, around uh, 70 billion grivnas uh, within three years, which is around eight or nine billion dollars. So uh, imagine this amount of money that has been money laundered by the group of people who were ruling the country. Uh, so if you if you hear something like, yeah, ideas of uh, let's say freedom or better life are pretty abstract. Uh, ideas think about uh, nine billions of uh, dollars there's been money laundered during this time uh, so it's kind of a lot of reasons to start a revolution so Yanukovych fled and uh, yeah things were going pretty like right direction the new ministers has been uh, voted has been put uh, uh, to, the, to the office and some good decision has been made in the parliament but unfortunately then uh, the aggression with uh, Russia has started as you know uh, after the Olympics Winter Olympics in Sochi has ended um, Russian uh, uh, soldiers and army and Putin uh, uh, recently maybe a week ago uh, he uh, confirmed that has, there has been a Russian forces in Crimea they occupied Crimea and uh, blocked all the main uh, administrations, airports, uh, military bases, and uh, they conducted the referendum on the 16th of March, which, which was uh, completely fake. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I already told you about the referendum. So now Ukraine lost uh, part of its uh, land, which is Crimea. By the way, the, uh, the sovereignty of the Ukrainian land and territory was uh, uh, promised uh, by the uh, um, uh, Budapest Memorandum of, of 1994, when Ukraine abandoned most of its uh, nuclear potential. Ukraine had a third world potential in nuclear weapon following uh, US and Russia. Uh, so basically we had uh, more uh, nuclear weapons than China, France and all the other countries and Great Britain. We abandoned this in order to, uh, f like for countries to back our sovereignty like Great Britain, US and Russia. And then Russia attacked us and took part of our land. So this is a paradox. But and now we have the same situation in the east of Ukraine. Uh, why uh, this destabilization goes on? Because the Putin's biggest nightmare is uh, Maidan in uh, Russia, Maidan in Moscow. He doesn't uh, want, he doesn't want uh, uh, national and sovereign state under his country. And uh, that's why he destabilize, destabilize sorry, the situation. And uh, we don't know how it's gonna go. No one knows. Uh, my logic cannot really capture how it's all gonna go. Only Putin knows. And uh, it's uh, very sad. Uh, we, yeah, the Donetsk region is very unstable right now. Uh, there are separatists who are being financed by Russia and uh, using Russia's military and also Russian soldiers who captured, seized the buildings. Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, we will solve the problem. Unfortunately, right now, uh, only the head has been changed. Yanukovych fled, there is a new person, an interim government, but the whole system remained the same. So there is many more things to be done, many more things to be changed. We need uh, to change the system. That's what we wanted, to live in a better world, to have better conditions of life, higher standards, better media, uh, better economy. Uh, here we're... Uh, Almost in the center of Maidan, you can see the burned building, which is the uh, building of the uh, working uh, parties. How we call them? Labor unions. Labor unions. Uh, it was uh, burned in February when there was clashes with the riot police, and um, different media reports different numbers. They say yeah, that some people died there. Uh, they burned and uh, to death. 
some report dozens of deaths, some reports hundreds of deaths. We don't really know what are the real numbers. And like this is pretty much the heart of Maidan, where everything has started. And you can see different flags of uh, different countries, uh, which uh, also shows the solidarity of uh, different nations, different people. There have been many, many nationals, nationalities uh, at Maidan, which is very nice. People have been so very supportive. Uh, I wanted to mention the uh, big uh, Russian propaganda and censorship in the media. That's what many people discuss uh, nowadays. Uh, basically, uh, everything in Russia owns by uh, one person. His name is uh, Putin. And uh, same goes with the TV, with the TV channels, with the radio, those kind of things. And uh, uh, it, you may have uh, heard or read that the, all the oppositional channels and the blogs were blocked. So it's pretty hard for people to get uh, uh, like true information, you know, or at least some uh, like other perspective than the one that Russia brings. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the news that were uh, been uh, distributed all around the Russia about Ukrainian revolution, they were saying that uh, their uh, like people at Maidan are pro-fascists, are now Nazis, are generally like Nazi people, which is uh, very wrong. I have to tell you that uh, yes, uh, there have been a right movement uh, uh, right now because uh, I think it's also um, it's uh, reasonable and uh, uh, it's uh, justifiable because this revolution has been a uh, national raise up. Uh, people were uh, thinking Athens, were uh, bringing up uh, Ukrainian flags and uh, generally feeling that uh, they're proud of uh, being who they are, being Ukrainians. Uh, so I uh, feel, I think that uh, conscious uh, nationalism is uh, all right, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, some kind of radical movements. No one says we're like the best nation, no one says we have like a blood, uh, blue blood, you know, in our veins. It's a uh, simple, uh, you know, proudness of uh, being uh, Ukraine. Many people became very conscious of uh, their nationality, of their nation, uh, but uh, it has been uh, perceived by Russians as uh, fascism. And uh, that's what many people think, you know, um, relations between Russians and Ukrainians has spoiled a lot during those uh, few weeks, maybe months. Uh, there is a huge gap right now between us and them, which is uh, very sad because uh, they're nice people, but uh, now we have troubles understanding each other. Uh, I, I still remain, I keep in touch with some of my good Russian friends. Some of them are here in Kiev, some of them abroad, some of them in Russia. But let's say the older population, so like my parents, my father is 45, he has friends in Russia who are the same age. And it's like, it's much harder for them to get some alternative information. So they call my father and uh, they're saying like, hey, like why the fascists took power in your city? You know, like you have to do something about that. Father's trying to describe the situation, tell them it's different, but it's pretty hard for them to see the other perspective. Yeah, that is Russian. Yeah, that is Russian. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. My father is Ukrainian, but uh, I have some Russian roots. I have some grand grandparents who were Russians. Uh, so yeah, yeah. No, uh, my father was uh, serving in the Russian Navy at the beginning of nineties. Uh, we were living in Russia for a few years, and uh, I mean, many people have relations with Russian relatives, like good friends. And it's a shame this kind of things going on, because uh, yeah, you have. Uh, relatives in Russia, our operator, my, my friend Andrew, yeah, uh, Andrew, and uh, uh, all this stupid geopolitics brings a huge gap and spoils relations between between us and Russians, which is uh, very sad. It shouldn't be going on. Uh, so yeah, the censorship and the propaganda is uh, very massive. Uh, I don't know how Russians going to cope with that, what can be done, because uh, as far as Putin going to be in power for at least another eight or ten years, it's probably not going to change. But what, what is the worst thing as well is that uh, many Russian unfortunately, Russians unfortunately justify the annexation of Crimea, which is uh, uh, well unacceptable for me, for example. So if, you, if uh, let's say, for example, I, I communicate with the Russian guy or whatever and he says like yeah I uh, support uh, Putin's uh, ideas on what he does uh, it's pretty hard to you know to keep in touch with this kind of person because you can simply annex a piece of land which uh, Putin did you know he never uh, 
uh, late, like recently, maybe a week ago, there have been a uh, online debate with Putin where he confirmed that there have been a Russian army, r Russian soldiers in Crimea. So the whole referendum in the 16th of uh, March uh, has been uh, going on under the guns, pretty much. You know, people, uh, it, it shows showed like 97% uh, of allegiance towards uh, Russia, which is nonsense. You never get 97% in any referendum. Moreover, 12% uh, of the Crimea populations are Crimea Tatars who never voted, who never came to this referendum because they want to live in Ukraine and they're against, uh, against Russia because in 1944 they have been uh, deported from their land from Crimea and uh, they still remember it, they, uh, this cultural memory, they, uh, they have uh, pretty negative views and uh, generally attitude towards Russia. So those people never vo voted uh, as well. Uh, no one cares about geopolitics, but let's uh, keep going farther. We're gonna probably uh, stop right now and uh, keep uh, doing the video farther at Maidan. Yeah, this is the bricks, uh, the paving stones that uh, people were uh, uh, taking from the ground, uh, breaking them into the pieces and throwing at the police. I mentioned this one, but now you could have seen it like in a more uh, detailed way, uh, closer look. But uh, let's go right now at Maidan. Uh, I told you the story pretty much. Uh, and uh, we're just going to show you the Maidan from the inside, how it looks like. And um, I'll, I'll tell you about how it's working what is around so uh, this is one of the barricades people created it's actually uh, smaller right now because it's kind of the post-revolution time and the uh, uh, yeah basically many things has been uh, demolished or taken away so the barricades are smaller right now they used to be pretty big and you can see the tents that's where people live people who still live at Maidan live in those tents they have everything necessary uh, for uh, surviving, you know, the streets, uh, they have food, they have uh, woods, those kind of things. And uh, yeah, this is the Christmas tree, very famous uh, Ukrainian revolutionary Christmas tree. You can see different flags up there, uh, flags of different nations, different countries who were uh, supporting uh, revolution in Ukraine. Uh, in the front, uh, straight, you can see the building of the work labor parties, of work laborers, uh, bu the building that was burned down in February during the clashes. Um, yes, uh, media reports people died uh, during the fire inside. Uh, it hasn't been reconstructed. And also, uh, a look at the ground, uh, you can see that uh, there is no paving stone. So basically, uh, the um, the way the road should have started uh, like here but uh, the paving stones were taken off so uh, yeah all of that all of those were used uh, against the police throwing at the police um, and building wall as well uh, people people build the whole wall in Groshevskova street to protect themselves against the police uh, let's make a circle around Maidan uh, on the right you can see that's also how it looks we have tents that's where people live and uh, people who are defending Maidan, the ex-militarists, uh, uh, the Afghan people, they were also living in those tents. And uh, I uh, suggest going maybe on the main uh, square right there, so we could uh, we could see the stage and uh, we could see some other uh, uh, parts parts of it. So uh, let's keep going there. And this is the main monument of the Maidan. Uh, the monument of independence uh, this uh, yeah beautiful lady up there uh, this is uh, behind it there is a hotel it's called ukraine um, media says that's where some snipers were holding positions and uh, shooting at people from uh, this uh, hotel actually this hotel looks pretty ugly so uh, i don't know i would love it to be reconstructed maybe name changed I don't know. but uh, let's go farther and uh, 
so yeah, there are different barricades. On the left, there is a barricade towards the Grushevskoho Street, where the clashes appeared uh, in uh, January. On the right, you have Krishatik Street, and uh, yeah, that's uh, part of where people used to come from mostly at the hardest days. Here you have flowers that uh, they were put here uh, for the solidarity of the people who died at Maidan. Yes, and the piano. Uh, you can see that uh, there are many talented people uh, among protesters and uh, yeah, playing piano in the middle of the post-revolutionary Maidan. were holding positions as well so they were on this uh, hotel Ukraine and on the left part of the uh, theater and uh, they were holding position and shooting uh, at people from those positions let's go farther and see here is the water thrower this water thrower on the left and turn left uh, the water thrower war was uh, taken from the police that's the one that had been used against the protesters so uh, now it's here as one of the symbols of the revolution. Yeah. What, is, what is important is that this street here is the street of, uh, it's called Institutska, which means the street of institutions. That's where most of the people died because of the sniper shots on that street. We can have a small walk maybe to uh, capture it. Uh, yeah, Maidan has uh, changed a lot. Uh, might not change people a lot. Sorry? Might not change people a lot. Yes, definitely. The civil society was born and the nation, the nation as well. People became very conscious about their country and uh, their independence, national ideas, uh, some positive things. Let's uh, you show us where people, most of the people actually died. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's on this street, it's the Institutska street. Uh, basically, snipers were shooting from those two buildings, and uh, so they were pretty much like, killing people at this uh, range around here. So most of the people died on that street there, and on that side, like behind us. Uh, yes, they were carried by uh, other people back and uh, it was horrible on the 18th and 20th of February. Uh, yeah, we spent uh, here some nights with the friends as well, but they were uh, more, uh, well, let's say peaceful nights in uh, December and January. And, uh, Sorry? Uh, so this is like the third barricade from Maidan that comes to Institutska. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can also see the rubber tires. These tires, they were used against the police. Uh, people would burn them and uh, the small cloud would appear that would protect them from snipers and from police generally. So many people would carry those uh, rubber tires. And uh, yeah, uh, actually the... Uh, I don't know how you call those like pit shop kind of things, you know, the, the one that repairs the cars, they would give it, give them for free actually. Uh, so you would not need to sell, to buy one. Like if you would come to those like shops where they repair cars, they would give those rubber tires for free. Uh, if you would say like you're gonna bring them to buy them. Uh, yeah, one of the biggest uh, barricades has been uh, under the bridge from this to this It's been maybe three meters or four meters high. Now it's smaller, much smaller because uh, the revolution is not uh, ongoing anymore. Uh, yeah, all the flowers uh, are still uh, remembered and uh, so now are to the uh, people who died, the victims of uh, Maidan. 
называется тут юг. Five months ago, everything has started in November. Okay, let's pop this one. Uh, when it was uh, winter, people would uh, simply gather stall together, like uh, keep it, um, put it, put it in the bags, and uh, put the bags. Hi guys, it's me, Andre again. Uh, thanks for watching this video. It was quite long, and I'm sorry for shaking the camera while while walking. Like, you know, I'm not professional in making videos. But uh, at this same place since last summer, where most of the people died, I think we would like to talk a bit about future of the country. And at the moment, it doesn't look that bright. The civil society has been developed a lot. However, we have elections in a month. We are still not sure if if it's going to happen. But uh, we know that economy is not going to be good next year. It will be hard to get it back on the level that it used to be before last revolutions. However, uh, looking at the people, talking to people, we strongly believe in our bright future. And, well, maybe things will get a bit better. And next time I come here, the street will <laughs> look more friendly to our foreign guests. But what I also wanted to say, Kyiv might not be the best city and probably should not uh, try to do that. How like as for me, Kyiv is the most inspirational city. That's for sure. So thank you very much. We were trying to make this video kind of entertaining and informative at the same time. We went through the whole Maidan and yeah, we hope you understand everything what we are trying to deliver you. And we are not asking you to believe us. How just try to understand and accept our point of view. Thank you very much and see you soon, hopefully. Bye.